Far out, man. Thank you. Welcome back if you joined us yesterday, but we've got another race coming up for the Clubman Sports Prototype Championship. Round eight took place yesterday and the grid is formed based on the finishing positions from yesterday. So round nine coming up very, very shortly indeed in what is a beautiful sunny day here in Norfolk once more. 17 degrees and we've got probably a, a track temperature that's mid to high 20s, one would have thought. So ideal racing conditions, a slight breeze and the breeze means that it will be a tailwind as the cars head up towards Richie's Corner. So a, a full grid of cars. There's a couple of fallen by the wayside with problems yesterday. So I know that Tom Bellamy, who didn't manage to start yesterday's race, has now withdrawn from this race. Uh, we have also lost uh, Graham Wilson, I believe, in the ex-Peter Richings car. He has also withdrawn from this race. And another car that we have lost is Lee Park, who so again didn't start yesterday, had problems with qualifying couldn't start the race and has not been shown on today's grid. I'm sure Mike Evans from the Clubman Sports Prototype Championship or the Clubman's Register, who will join me in the commentary box very shortly, might be able to shed some light on exactly what their problems have been and why they are absent from this second race of the weekend. The race yesterday was secured by the man who lines up on pole position, say finishing positions from yesterday, give us this grid. So. James Clark keeps this fantastic run of momentum that he's got. Uh, eight races in, eight overall wins for James Clark so far. The man who scooped up the CSP1 Championship back in 2017 and is at the wheel of the championship winning car from last year when it uh, went to victory lane and was the champion in the hands of Alex Champkin. Um, we should be able to give you the grid as the cards head off on their final formation lap. So let's guide you through the way then they line up as they head around this fantastic Snetterton circuit. So lots of weaving being done to try and just build a little bit more tyre temperature into these cars, which in the classes CSP1 and CSP2, the only permitted tyres are Hankook slick tyres in these sorts of conditions in the classic uh, classes. 
then there is another option that's available but uh, again uh, that is likely to be an Avon tyre but the wet tyres would be Hankook but of course no no chance of any rain today so let's guide you through the way then they line up as they head around this fantastic Snetterton circuit pole position goes the way of James Clark and he's got the former champion Steve Dickens that sits alongside another multiple former champion Clive Wood is there on row number two and alongside him will be Alan Cook who had a busy old race yesterday did Alan uh, the third row of the grid sees Ben Malik line up alongside Adrian Lester. And on row number four, it's Steve Chaplin and the number 20 car of Mathieu Gautier Thornton, who claimed his fifth class win yesterday. Uh, then on to the next row of the grid, Will Freeman has the hugely experienced Barry Webb, who started racing, what, 1975, I think was the first time we saw Barry on the grid. So that's row number five. And row six is Samantha Evans, who is the daughter of Mike Evans, who will join me in the commentary box very shortly. And alongside is Neil Chapman. Then as we move on to the next row of the grid, which will be row number seven, it's Tom Muirhead and Roger Watton with Brendan Hurd lining up alongside Steve Little, who had problems in free practice yesterday and charged his way through the order in the race. Let's see what he can do from there. Uh, row nine of the grid is Mike Upton and Colin Ralph with Steve Collier and Jared Lester, who had an engine change yesterday, so didn't race. Uh, he will start uh, on that next row of the grid. And the final couple of rows of the grid, another problem, uh, Carl, that had problems yesterday, Spencer McCarthy alongside Ian Crombie. And at the back of the grid on his own, a retiree from yesterday is Sean Hurley. So the car's lining up on the grid. And let's have a, a quick look. Uh, Mike Evans has joined me in the commentary box. <laughs> However, we're, we're trying to work out how to plug the headset in. We'll, we'll hear from him very shortly. We'll hear from him very shortly, rest assured. We might just get the race underway and then we'll introduce him in a bit. So, uh, James Clark sitting there on pole position. It's a 15-minute race. It's final few rows of the grid just coming into position now. So, red lights are on on the gantry. And as the lights go out, which they do now, it's not a bad start from pole position for James Clark. Steve Dickens goes with him, though, but isn't quite as quick away. So, already opts to tuck behind. Clive Wood is there in third place. And it's going to be Alan Cook that slots through into fourth position. But everybody is safely away as they turn their way through Richie's corner. Shape it up I can now introduce Mike Evans from the club. <laughs> Hello there. Hi. We've got you. <laughs> We've got Mike Evans that now works. <laughs> um, uh, uh, news, news with regards to a few cars. We've lost a few along the way, haven't we, from yesterday? We've lost a few and we've got a few more that had bombs yesterday who are now out at, at running with us today. So, yes, we can talk about that as we go through the meeting. Let's have a quick look then. So that is Tom Muirhead who is being uh, undone by Steve Collier. Steve Collier will be one to watch out because he yeah. retired yesterday. So he's got to charge his way through the grid, hasn't he, at the That's wheel right. of that so vision? He's starting at the back and everything like that. So he's coming through. All it was was an alarm when his dash came up, which was he thought was oil pressure, was actually only uh, high water temperature. So he, he pulled off when he, maybe he didn't actually need to. So he's trying to make uh, amend for those errors yesterday. Yeah, but probably better to do it than yeah, risk the yeah, engine, yeah. isn't it? Well, so yeah, yeah, if you're not sure. He had an engine problem at Anglesey in the final race, so he's sensitised to that. Adrian Lester being kept busy in the early stages of this one with cars queuing up behind him. Out of Williams goes uh, Ben Malik in the old blue car. There's Adrian Lester who's got Steve Chaplin queuing up behind him. Matteo Gautier Thornton isn't yep. that far away either. So he's our CSP2 leader. So we've obviously got James Clark now coming into the under the bridge there. We, so. We're talking about James Clark being the ex Alex Champkin car, but yes. Matteo Gautier Thornton is an ex Alex Champkin car. Yeah, well, well no, that's right. And I that thought was, it was. That was the um, CSP2 car that Alex first introduced, the first of like the new fans. Alex has raced that in CSB2, but then he built this new car um, and was out in it, developing it last season. The green car with the white and the day glow flashes is one to watch as well. That is going to be Jared Lester carving his way up through the tail end of the order. Roger Watson just heading round through shot. He'll be busy uh, beavering away in CSP2 at the moment. That's right, yeah. He's got Samantha who finished fourth just behind Barry yesterday. And I, I certainly had quite a few people 
commenting and bringing me up and telling me the commentator's cursed. Like, what's on there? <laughs> I'm pleased you said it and not me. I'm pleased you said it. <laughs> you can get away with it a bit more. <laughs> Uh, so over the start finish line uh, they come. First lap is completed. What have you got? So we've got um, actually a dice over CSPA. So we've got Steve Chaplin and Spencer McCarthy. Spencer had problems yesterday. The car refused to do more than half a lap at a time. Or two. They eventually got two laps in at the end of the day. So he's now out in the car. And it's nice to see Spencer in the CSPA car, the, the mallet there, on Steve Chaplin's uh, tail. Uh, how, much, how much racing has he done in clubmans before? Because Spencer, I usually associate with things like um, MG's yes, and Ginettas, that's, which that's he did right, yeah, Indeed, no, he's done a lot of varied racing. He has raced in clubmans in the HSCC Classic Clubman Series. Um, done one or two meetings for many years. and then, uh, No, he's not a regular stalwart, but it's great to see him out with us this the first time. Steve Collier uh, managing to sneak through another place game. That's over Adrian Lester. So this has been a brilliant start to the race from Steve Collier. Yeah. Where did he start? He started. 19th, right. he came through 7th at the end of the first lap. Yeah, that's brilliant. So it's great to see him after all these problems yesterday. He's, put, he, now he's normally up there with the Alan, uh, um, Alan Cook, um, Ben Malik, Adrian Lester die. So he'll soon be up with them and it should be interesting to see how they go. So, so in here we've got Steve and um, Spencer there leading the, no, the fighting over the CSPA lead. Yeah, it's a really good fight for the lead of CSPA. Jared Lester isn't that far behind them either. As Spencer McCarthy goes for the lead of CSPA, draws himself alongside and in front of Steve Chaplin's Phantom. So the mallet goes through, and then Jared Lester picks both of them off at the wheel of the Clubman <laughs> yeah. 35. Yeah, so a little bit more powerful. So he's just got a bit more straight line speed to be able to overtake both of them down the straight. Yeah, so Spencer McCarthy pushing hard yes. and actually sitting behind Jared Lester, isn't he? He's, yeah. he's already starting to pull away from oh, Steve no. Chaplin. That's right. No, he is a, he is a experience, as you say, experienced racer, fast yeah. racer. And it's great to see him out with us. I mean, quite often the, the fastest CSPA cars can be up in second, third place like that. We have Mark Charles this as our first meeting at Silverstone right up there, actually leading to the first couple of laps. So over the start finish line, that is another lap chalked into the book. 11 minutes of the race still to go. James Clark leading the way and already having built a six second advantage. Spencer McCarthy leading his class, which is uh, CSPA, is uh, pulling well and truly away from Steve Chaplin and is still sitting on the coattails of Jared Lester. So. That's right, and Jared's getting in, in on his dad there. So Adrian is the next car up the road and what are they? two and a half seconds apart at the moment so that would be the challenge there I'm sure for Jared to, have, to get alongside his father. Uh, the problem with uh, with Jared Lester yesterday was an engine yes, was it not? Yes they had an engine problem yesterday um, which they had to put a new engine in so they actually didn't get it well they got it in for the race first race yesterday or the only race yesterday but then they couldn't leave the water system so they were able to cure that overnight so it's yeah, it's, it's up to looks like he's up to full speed today yeah uh, so the two of them um, uh, busy squabbling away for what will be seventh and eighth position uh, which will also be seventh and eighth in csp1 because it's yep. the top eight cars that are all in csp1 at the moment oh, we've got samantha having got past neil um neil there so that's good news so she's moving on now you've got Barry ahead, ahead of them so with Tom Muirhead and leading CSPB in, in between yeah CSP2 by the way is being led by Mattia Gautier Thornton still at the wheel of number 20 car uh, on this lap so yeah, Michelle uh, sorry uh, Samantha <laughs> Evans uh, Michelle Haywood is another driver so yeah, Samantha well, Evans um, driver, yeah. <laughs> um, just turning her way in 17th place onto the Bentley straight and Neil Chapman uh, behind here's Barry Webb squabbling away with Tom Muirhead who scooped up another win in CSPB yesterday that's what his seventh class win yes, of the season yeah, Tom yeah. Muirhead. No, in, indeed Tom's having a cracking season so it's about time we moved up to CSP2 it'd be great to see him in the CSP2 car I'm sure he's, he's a well uh, if he could move up to CSP2 and we, we could get dad couldn't we John Muirhead back yes. in the CSPB <laughs> <Yeah>. car <laughs> Well, John's building up another car. Oh, is so, he? Yes. You could see John Housing. Yeah, yeah. but I'm not sure. I think it's still a long way to go with everything like that. But no, it'd be nice to see the pair of them out there. Brilliant fight going on for fourth and fifth place at the moment. Alan Cook is about to be undone, is he, by no, Ben Mallet, right, but he's on the outside line and then needs to make sure he closes the door to stop Steve Collier John. coming through. <laughs> so this is a brilliant fight for fourth, for fifth and for sixth position. And remember, the red car that's at the tail end of this trio has come from 19th on the grid. Yeah, but he's got good, uh, good pace, Steve Collier, so yes. 
what, what, what's the thinking behind the, the, the redesign of the, the front corners of Steve Collier's vision? Have they put that through a wind tunnel to I, check I, that it I, works? I, I doubt it somehow. I yeah. think it is all aerodynamic and reducing the drag of the front wheels. Because like, you obviously got, when you've got exposed wheels there, a lot, a lot of drag is generated. It's, uh, and I don't mean this derogatory, no. but it, it, it looks sort of a bit Heath Robinson <laughs> yeah. in some respects. But it, but it clearly, no, he's no, happy that it no, works. No, indeed. I think he's done it all himself. So, yes, yeah, so this is it. But no, it's great. That's beauty of Clubman's, though. It's not a, a, a prescribed form that people can play around with the cars and do their own thing, do their own body work, do changes. I mean, this is in its heyday. There was all different makes of cars yep. out there, one make cars. And so Home-built specials. Yeah, yeah, and so many talented engineers who became Formula 1, respected Formula 1 engineers, actually started off their um, engine, testing their engineering skills with Clubman's cars and everything like that. So yep. that was, we've got a great um, heritage, a great pedigree there. Well, Chris, Chris Greville-Smith yes. and Richard yeah. Cresswell and all of those yeah. that, that were, you know, busy designing and, and penning cars, which are still competitive yes. today in Clubman's. No. It, yes, indeed, indeed. But obviously Max Mosley, um, who else? No, there's been quite a few. Probably um, something like John Barnard as well, Yeah, yeah, it? yeah. no, there's yeah. people similar. No, I don't think John, but other people of that ilk have certainly started off in Clubman's and, and that. Um, the names has always Eric, escaped me. Eric you know? Broadley, maybe, yeah, or yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah um, so. I think Patrick Head had one. Um, Doesn't surprise yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. no. Yeah. So over the start finish line now come, still with uh, Ben Malik now at the front of the queue. So he's managed to pick off the almost Martini-esque liveried car of Alan Cook. Alan Cook has also now got Steve Collier queuing up behind him. And Jared Lester's beginning to close on in the mall as well. Yes. So Jared's past age and we didn't see that, but now he's, he's gaining in on, in on them. So that would be a fascinating. There's Tom Muirhead still going. Up. So we've now got Samantha closing up on Barry, actually having overtaken Tom. So, so Samantha's got a slow start, but she's improving, definitely. So I think she's trying to make amends for Barry getting past her on the last lap yesterday. Yeah, she just just lost out in the end, didn't she? Yeah. Uh, not to, uh, to Barry Webb. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's wait and see as to what happens today. Yeah. Unfortunately, we missed Neil was actually on their tail as well, but we, Neil spun it and we didn't catch that <laughs> on the camera. So, but no, the three of them were having the cracking dice yesterday. Neil Chapman wants in on the fun as yeah, well, yeah. so he's not he's not that far away. Yeah. So uh, that train oh, of cars oh, heading down into towards... down the inside. Oh no, I thought in the background there, yes, Samantha was having a look at Barry. So now this would be interesting to see where she's quicker, if anywhere, because yesterday Barry overtook her on the straights. And I said, do you want the wing? Dropping down slightly, giving a more straight line speed. No, I need it as it is to be comfortable through the corners. Through the corners, yes. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, compromise a bit of top end yeah. speed for. Uh, yeah, the, the, the speed through. Now you've got the fast corners here, the first corner, and then Coram as the yeah. final real fast corner. So in towards a breaking area for Agostini. Barry Webb just makes sure that he hooks the apex, gets cleanly off the corner. The door, door closed, yes, indeed. So Samantha Evans can't pick her way through. And whilst these two are squabbling, do just keep an eye on what's going on in the background as well, because Tom Muirhead might edge up. Samantha Evans having another sneaky look up the inside. Oh, yeah, Oggies, yeah. no, door's closed again. Oh, hang on, there's a bit of a door there, so see if we can get the overlap. No, onto the back straight. So. <laughs> and, here's, and here's Tom Muirhead. Yeah. That, that, those two little corners of squabbling has brought yes. Tom Muirhead back right in, into the mix. But of course, into, yes. down the straight, that's where the CSPB car is going to run out of puff. Well, ho yeah, hopefully. So hopefully, it's hopefully they can get onto Barry's tail. But Barry's car is phenomenally quick in a straight line. So it's as Michelle has proven for several years, she was always really quick. Obviously, she drove that car for many years. So, as a front-running CSP2 car, so Barry hasn't really got much of an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> So the three of them there. We've also still got this great fight going on with, uh, by the look of things, Ben Malik now feeling the pinch from Alan Cook, who he got past a couple of laps ago. And uh, Steve Collier's progress has sort of plateaued now, isn't it? He can't yeah, get any further up than six. I can understand he can't quite get past him. Maybe he's just sitting there waiting for the incident to occur and everything like that. And let the door, leave the door open for him somewhere along the way. So. And Jared, Jared Lester's still just in the background. Here we go. Is this Whoa. Alan Cook up the inside? No. And so Ben Malik hangs on to the place for the moment. No, this, yeah, Steve Collier's right on, on Alan's tail there. So. Yeah, great little fight it is for fourth, for fifth, for sixth, for seventh. Uh, all four of them heading around through the infield section of the circuit. Meantime, up at Richie's corner, Barry Webb still under pressure from Samantha Evans. Yeah, Barry defensive. <laughs> <laughs> he, he makes sure he gets that covered off yeah. straight away, straight out of Richie's and straight to the inside line to protect no, it on the, the run in towards the Wilson hairpin. Yeah, no, this is the Redditch team. You've got um, 
Pete Mitchings, Barry Webb and Paul Freeman raced for many years, all of them are excellent at defence and everybody said trying to get past any of those three is always hard work because they know exactly where to place the car. Oh, I'm th three abreast there in, under the bridge, so... Yeah, that's Jared Lester. Jared's got both, yes. Jared Lester is through, uh, also Steve Collier is through and losing two places is poor old Alan, Alan Cook. Cook so Alan, you know, you've got to get your finger out now and get pa pa past these guys, so... He's got his big mate Paul King here, who's a big friend of his and everything like that. So they, they go off and do track days around Spa together. So I'm sure Paul King will be giving Alan some cook after the race, <laughs> <laughs> telling him how he should be doing it. So um, back for more squabbles again, by the look of things. This is Steve Chaplin, who is um, fighting away with Ian Crombie, that was. And Samantha Evans has made it through. She's picked the pocket of Barry Webb. However, that was coming out of Williams. And now Barry's going to pick up the toe as they head down the Bentley the straight. straight. Yeah, no, this will be an interesting one. happens when we get to underneath the bridge. We'll be looking at the data about trying, Samantha trying to break later into the, into the corner here. But it looks like Barry is already ahead. Yep, so job done for Barry Webb. Just As you said, that car is indecently quick in a straight line, so he just edges past, even though they're both running the double overhead cam 1600cc K-series engine. That's right, yes. But the, the car is very light and very slippery. This is uh, the car that Samantha's driving. This is a slightly bigger car, so it's actually probably better suited to a CSP1 engine in there, but actually take the power. Here comes Steve Collier. He's up the inside of Ben Malik, so another place gained. I said that his progress had sort of plateaued. Well, as soon as I said that, he <laughs> clearly clearly got the hints uh, because all of a sudden he's started to work his way back through the order once more. Um, so good drive from Steve Collier, as we say, from 19th on the grid. And, and let's not forget, Jared Lester's come from 20th. He's now up to 5th. Yeah, indeed. And you've got Alan and Ben Lester. Back nose to tail those pants and to spend their whole lives following each other around the circuits and everything like that. You've still got another race to come up later on. Yes. If memory serves me correctly, the way your regulations work is finishing order from this will give us the grid for the third race as well, yes, won't it? Yes, that's right, yes. Yeah, it has, has changed this year, so it's uh, finishing orders. So if, yeah. so if Jared can get to there from 20th on the grid and Steve Collier can get to where he is, which is sixth from the 19th on the grid, bodes well, doesn't it? Yes. Uh, they work their way through and past Mike Upton, who stays well and truly out of harm's way, allows Jared Lester to squeeze his way through. Should see Steve Collier go through on the run in towards the never-ending right-hander at Corum, which in one of these cars must be a yeah. staggering corner, yeah, Corum. Yeah, it's, it's a phenomenal corner. Just, you feel like you're hanging on to it. No, it is just about flat, but it's teetering on the edge around there. And like that. So it's, yeah, it tests your skills out. It tests your neck muscles out as well I, with the downforce that these cars generate. Yeah, the, uh, the lateral G yeah, around through that corner will be absolutely astonishing. finish line and we've got um, less than a minute to go so uh, our race leader we haven't seen much of him because James Clark has done what James, James Clark, Clark keeps doing yes, yes. this season 14 and a half seconds in the lead he, he won the championship didn't he back in 2017 James Clark that's right yes when we no, first year that we really moved up to the CSP1 and the 200 brake horsepower so yes driving a mallet there they beat Chris Malik he did really really well so and he's, he really enjoys and the whole family enjoyed clubman's racing so it's nice to see them back oh, <laughs> it's, it's Barry Webb and Samantha <laughs> Evans again Barry Webb still oh, hanging on to it no, we left room for Samantha she should have tried to go around the outside and Tom Muirhead in the CSPB has now got past us so, oh, no. you know, so come on Tom you can tow Samantha back up to Barry <laughs> <laughs> well Barry's having to draw on all of that experience he, I, I, 1975 I looked it up last right. night he first well, first appeared racing Barry well, Webb, so he, he's not quite 50 years of, of, of racing but but as good as yes yeah, I don't know he's been going a long time and very experienced saying that knows how to drive a white car yeah so uh, our race leader james clark should be in the final sector at the moment the clock has ticked to zero so over the start finish line goes barry webb tom muirhead and samantha they've got another lap of fun to enjoy but now taking the checkered flag comes uh, our winner james clark so that is now nine wins out of nine races, a brilliant, brilliant consistency from the Phantom driver. Yeah, and then you've got Steve Dickens here, second um, across the line of the champion a few years back. Yeah, and then followed by Clive Wood, who was third yesterday. And I don't know where Clive's pace has gone. He's, he's not quite the, the Clive we know from the last year or two. Yeah, Clive, another sort of um, three times back-to-back -back champion, yeah, wasn't yeah, he? 2018, yeah. 19 and 20, Clive yeah. won it. Yeah. 
And Jared Lester were waiting to uh, head over the start finish line. Remember that Barry Webb and Tom Muirhead and Samantha Evans battle will still continue <laughs> around for a further lap. <laughs> Uh, here it is, just coming up towards Agostini now, Barry Webb. Oh, Samantha's got back through and ahead of Tom Muirhead once yes, more, so yes. um, you, you did the right thing of, uh, of ushering her up a place, but thanks to the toe of Tom Muirhead. Now, that's right, so now she's got to get back Barry Webb. Obviously, down the straight she won't be there, but in at the, the corner at the end of the straight is really, I think, her opportunity around there. See, what she, see if she just go around the outside of Barry this time. Uh, let's see what she might be able to do. For the moment, up towards Williams. This is the important corner, isn't it? Yeah. You carry all the momentum out of here, all the way along the Bentley straight. So a good exit out of there would work. Uh, we've had Steve Collier through in fourth place. Ben Malik through in fifth. Alan Cook through in sixth place. Adrian Lester seventh. Uh, good r drive by Spencer McCarthy from 21st on the grid to finish in eighth place. But down towards the bottom of the Bentley straight, Barry Webb still clinging on to the yeah. place. And Samantha lost yeah. out a little bit yeah. again on straight line yeah. speed. Yeah. Indeed. So, no, maybe that wing is going to come down for the final race and see what we can do there. <laughs> <laughs> like it or not, that's going to tell her what yeah, you're going to do. Yeah. Well, this is it. I think it's worth a try. So there's Will Freeman just taking second in CSP2. In the Ardmore. Yeah, we, yep. we haven't seen Matt go to your Thornton, who actually has one CSP2. No, we didn't see much of Matt, no, did we, no. in reality? Uh, he, he, like James, uh, that team this year are doing really well. And, and, be off and gone and everything like that but Samantha's going to keep Barry honest until the end yep uh, I think it's, she's just going to come up short again not yeah, quite yeah. feature on the podium again the overall podium in the, the class so Barry Webb finishes third in CSP2 only just though shadowed again today by Samantha Evans and Tom your head there winning CSP B with, with Neil Neil Chapman coming through Yep, yep. Neil Chapman to take the checkered yep, flag yep, and yep. Jared Lester has not come through at the end of that oh, lap. He's dropped down through the order, so ah, whether we've lost him somewhere on circuit, so Jared showing a 17th. But ah, for James Clark, it is another strong performance again. The pole position, led every lap, fastest lap of the race and the win. Um, he's just doing nothing wrong, is he? No, indeed. No, peerless driving and everything like that. So, so it's no, nice to see. And no, the car, they've obviously got the car going really, really well. So it's... No. James knows how to drive it. I want to be bigger, stronger, drive a faster car. Take me anywhere in circles. Take me anywhere I want to go and drive around a faster car. I for nothing else. I was for nothing else. I wanna be big and strong to drive a fast car. At the touch of a button, I can go anywhere.
So um, that's it for the moment for Clubman's Sports Prototype Championship. So yeah. from Mike Evans and myself, Mark Werrell, goodbye.